Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis Professional 2022 tutorial brought to you by the Civil Engineering Essentials channel. Well, in this video we are going to take a deeper look onto the possible loads that are defined on nodes and on members or lines. For planar loads, which means loads applied on surfaces, well, there will be a separate and different video. <clears throat> now, let's first of all close this file. So, I'll hit file and say close basically close project. Now I'm going to select building design, load it. Now building design has a different template, but well, so I'll go to view. For that, I'm just going to define a very quick beam. So let's say we have a beam of x058, y is 0, and z is 0, and 1.4, like that. So if you click on beams, now we don't want a steel beam, we want to have a reinforced concrete beam. And by the way, the sections you have defined before will remain here. And you can select the section that was defined previously and work with it. And if you are interested in seeing what the section was, you can click on the sections here, double click on the section, and then you can see and revise the definition of this section. Well, I'm going to use the section I have defined before. If you want to define a new section, you can click on the browse button and define a section that you would like to use. Now, let's draw this beam in two pieces. So let's just draw piece number one and piece number two. And now we have drawn our beam, which we can see via the cross-section shape like this. Now, let's put a reaction or a support for that. Let's say that this beam is fixed on one side, so it's a cantilever beam. Now we have fixed the beam, and now let's apply a load case. You click on the load toolbar, you can see that there are all kinds of loads that you can define. There are nodal loads, member loads, surface load, and self-weight or masses. Now you can actually define self-weights and remove self-weights from this. If it doesn't get removed using this command, there is a different trick to remove self-weights. Now there are nodal forces, there are member forces and surface forces. So if you click on nodal force, as, as the name suggests, it's a force on a node. So basically, you can click on a node and apply those forces. The forces you see here, x, y, and z, as well as moment x, moment y, and moment z, are in the global axis. Each member has a set of local axis and a set of global axis. For the beam now, you can see that the local axis and the global axis coincide. This is not always the case, but in this example, it is the case. Let's say we want a force in x that is 5, a force in y that is 3, and the force in, z, force in z that's negative 10. If you add this, simply select your node by clicking on it. You will apply the forces. If it doesn't apply for some reason, you can always click apply and then it applies the forces. You can see three forces. And very importantly, the arrows are scaled based on the force value. Now let's say that you have made a mistake and that you would like to delete the load. Now first of all, if you close the load definition window, robot hides the loads. You can reshow them by clicking on the load symbols and load values to enable and disable those loads. Now the first thing is, is that the load should be available to be clicked. So you simply right click on the load and say delete. This is a possible way of deleting the load, which of course asks the question, what do you want to delete? I want to delete for the indicated load, so OK, and the load disappears. Now, there is another way of deleting the load, so let's redefine it first. By selecting the node you want to delete, and then clicking on the delete and applying. This will remove the load, as you can see. The third way of deleting a, node, a load on a node is basically to go to the load table definition. Now, what is the load table? The load table is a table that lists all the loads that were defined on the structure. So you can access this load table by clicking on loads, going to load table. This will show you all the loads that were defined on the structure, even if they are deleted. So for example, you can see here, that you have a, on the case dead load, a nodal force, because what we are defining is actually called a nodal force. You can see that there is a nodal force. It's applied on three, which is the node number, which is basically uh, this number. If you open the node numbers, it's node number three, as you can see here. So it's applied on node three, the value is 5, 3, etc. Those are the rest of the values you have on the load. Now you can perfectly delete this load by hitting the table and clicking on delete. You can see that the load no longer exists. There are also two other loads, but they are null because they are not applied on anything. It doesn't hurt if you want to delete them anyway. You can go back to your view by either clicking this little X button, which closes the load table, or just go to view, which keeps the load table tabbed in the bottom. Now I'm just going to close the load table because I don't want to have tabs that are unnecessary. So if you close the load table, the tab disappears from here. A little bit more details about nodes. So you can apply forces, you can apply moments, 
Please notice that a counterclockwise moment is positive and a clockwise moment is negative. So you can perfectly add a bunch of moments and forces to that. So you can also uh, rotate the nodal force around the three axes. Uh, to do that, let's first of all delete and get rid of this nodal force and get back. Let's say you want to do rotate it 90 degrees or let's say 45 degrees around the x-axis. So if you click 45 degrees here, which is a counterclockwise rotation, and click on this, you can see that your entire system of loads is rotated around the x-axis 45 degree counterclockwise. Let's just once again apply some loads. If you run the analysis, let's take a look on the bending moment diagrams, results, diagrams on members. Let's say the bending moment diagram in MY, and you see that there is bending moment uh, as expected. Okay, now let's say we want to apply imposed displacements, which is a different type of nodal load that you can access from nodes, imposed displacements. Now, imposed displacements are used to model the differential settlement of supports, meaning that one of your supports has settled, for example, one millimeter, whereas the other didn't. Or both of them settled, but one of them has settled one millimeter more than the other. This is imposed displacement, and this is done only on supports. So first of all, if you try to modify the structure now, for example, if you want to delete the load, a warning will come out telling you that you are trying to modify a structure which means that the results you see here is going to become outdated. So it's warning you that if you go on and delete the load, the results you see now become inaccurate. So if you say yes, we acknowledge that, you can see that the load is now not here, the results are now still there, but the results are of course inaccurate and outdated. You can also see this here in the bottom, you can see that results, finite element method, are out of Date. To get them back to be updated, you simply click on the calculation button again, which will run the analysis. And of course, after finishing the analysis, you can see that results became green and are available now because the results are now updated and are available. Of course, there is a small difference here because the loads were deleted. You would think that there shouldn't be any bending moment or shear force because there is no forces. However, there are because there is the self-weight of the beam and uh, you can delete the self-weight of the beam by going to loads load table and deleting this line which is the self-weight now i will just keep it because i want the self-weight to be here if you delete the self-weight you will get zero results here you can try this and tell me what the results are you got now if you go to impose displacements and try to impose one millimeter in the z so you are going to make a reaction settle one millimeter now, if you apply this on this node, this is actually incorrect because this node is not a support. So if you apply a differential settlement on a non-supported node, it will actually not work. So let's apply a support here. Let's say we want a pin now. <clears throat> if you apply a pin here, of course, it's warning me that the application of a pin will change the results. I will accept that. And you can see that my results are now out of date. Now we have a support here, and now we can let this support settle. So now we can apply an imposed settlement of one millimeter at that support. So we select it, apply it, now it's one millimeter. It's going one millimeter down. So if you run the analysis, you will see that the diagrams have changed to reflect us making the beam go one millimeter down. If you try to right click it and delete it, sometimes the robot doesn't cooperate with this, and if it doesn't, Oh, it does, but if it doesn't, you can go to load, load table, and manually delete the imposed displacement like this. Now, those loads, once again, are not uh, active because there is no application in the list. And by the way, you can reapply any load you want by basically clicking on the list and putting the serial number of the node you want to apply to. So if you say 3, now if you look here, there is no load on the node, but if you say 3 and then hit enter, the load gets back, as you can see here. Now, this is an old load I defined previously. It's some sort of random thing. I'll just delete it. And uh, there is something called the force on point, and I will keep this for later. This is everything regarding the load definition of nodes. Members are a little bit different. <clears throat> there are more options for members. Uh, the most general members options are the uniform load, the trapezoidal load, and the member force. And to do that, I will just, first of all, uh, delete all the loads. So loads, load table. Let's delete everything, including the self-weight. So now no loads, are, um, no loads are defined. And, well, if we run the analysis, there will be no loads. As you can see, everything is zero now. There is no moment because there is no load. 
So uh, let's say we want to define another member. So let's say that we want to delete this member. You can delete members by highlighting them and pushing the delete button. Of course, it will warn you that your analysis is going to be invalid. We have done this. We know the drill. So let's draw a bar. Now, if you try to draw a bar like this, it forces it to be horizontal because it's a beam. Now, let's override this by removing the horizontal beam. And now you can once again draw a bar, but this time it can be in 3D space like this. So we have this sort of strange beam. And the reason is I want to explain the local axis here. You can see that each beam has those three little arrows, X, Y, and Z, green, blue, and uh, red. And they are different from the global axis. For example, if you go to front, it's obviously that the axes here are different than your global axis, which means the beam has its own axis or own local axis system. This gets very important because the results that you show in the diagrams for members are actually in the local axis system. We will talk about results later. For now, let's talk about loads. So if you go to the load definition and select members, for example, uniform load, there is always the ability to select a global coordinate system or a local coordinate system. Now, if you select global, you still have the ability to project the load. There is also the ability to define an eccentricity for a load, which means that the load is displaced a certain distance y and a certain distance z from the bar, which would cause, for example, torsional moments if you displace it in the direction of y. I'll just leave it as it is and talk about local and global. Now, if you apply a negative 5 in the z direction, if you apply it, apply it globally, then the force is going to simply go down following the global z-axis, as you can see here. And if you click on this one, it will go down following the global z-axis. You can see that there is obviously a difference between the local z-axis, the z-axis of the member, and the global z-axis, the z-axis of the structure. And the load follows the global z-axis because we are told it to follow the global z-axis. <coughs> and here, uh, both local and global are the same, so the load actually follows the global z-axis. However, there is no difference because both axes are the same. Let's say that we want to delete this, so let's get rid of it. Now you can get rid of it by, for example, clicking on the member like this and just putting X. I think that's the wrong member, so let's reselect it. Okay, clicking X saying apply. So now the, member, the load is no longer here. If you select a uniform load now, you can select local, and this time it will define in Z, but the Z now is the local Z, and you can see that the force follows the local Z axis, not the global Z axis. So those are two coordinate axes you can use to define the loads. Now please don't be bothered by those numbers because those are results that are out of date. If you want to have the correct results, you run the analysis, which will cause you to have a cantilever-like bending moment. It seems the values are not visible. That is because the scaling is incorrect. I will just click normalize and I will discuss this in another video. Regardless, those are local and global coordinates using a uniform load, which means the load is the same on every point on the beam. You can rotate the load similarly to what we have done in the nodal force. Please refer to that section for more details. The next, the next load that will be covered is the trapezoidal load. So if you click on loads, on member loads, trapezoidal load, you can define any trapezoidal load you would like to have. You can define a trapezoid with two points, three points, and four points. You can see that the table gets larger accordingly the more points you choose. Let's say two points. The direction of the load will be in Z. It's going to be global. And the, the values are negative 2 to negative 4. The starting value of negative 2 is at x equals 0 meters, because absolute. And the ending value of negative 4 is at x equals 1 meters, because absolute. Absolute means absolute distances. Relative means that the distance is relative to the length. So half length, quarter length, 33% of length, and so on. You can also choose the angles or rotation, but I will just leave them as it is. You click Add, but, well, the question is, who determines what the starting end is? Because those are measured from the start, 0 to 1. So if you click Add, well, it's you who decides where left and right is, because you see, if you move your cursor near the beam, two arrows pop up. If you are on the left side, the arrows go to the right, meaning the start is on left, the end is on right. If you go to the right side, two arrows pop up, 
going to the left, meaning that the start is on the right and the end is on the left. So if you click like this, the load gets applied and you can see it's from start zero to end one. If you click on the other side, you will get the exact opposite load. Let's try relative. So let's say that we want to have a load now between 40% and 60% of the beam, let's say. Now, since 40 and 60 are symmetric around the middle point, it doesn't matter if you take left and right. Well, let's take the left side. You can see that we have a load here exactly as we intended. This is four loads. Similarly, you can define a distributed uniform moment, or uh, you can also define member force. For example, distributed uniform moment, you can apply a uniform MX moment, and I want to do it locally because I want to define a torsional moment around this bar or beam. So let's say it's 5, and let's say add, select this beam, and say apply, and you have your torsional moment. It doesn't look like it, but if you rotate the 3D view like this, then you can see that it's actually moments. Okay, so we covered moments and we covered uh, trapezoidal loads. There are still more loads to cover. You have uh, the member force, which is an extremely important force. It's basically a nodal force in the middle of a bar. So it has exactly the same definition of the nodal force, with one exception that there is a coordinate to select the location. So for example, you can select absolute 1.5, and it will be somewhere here. Of course, there is also local and global. Let's say we want local negative 1.5z. So if you say add, and click on this side to denote to the software that the left side is the start, if you click on that, you will get a force in z local. That is 1.5 and is 1.5 meters away from the start. There is also a change in length if you want, because change in length can cause stresses if it is prohibited. So if you want to change the length, basically you click here, you simply say what the change in length is. It could be a percentage, it could be an absolute value of meters or millimeters. You add it and apply it to a bar. There is also, del there is also the difference in temperature. In this case, please double check before everything Please double check your materials and double check in the material characteristics the alpha or basically the thermal expansion coefficient because this is what controls uh, what the thermal stress or thermal force could do. There is also planar load but we will leave this for later. This simulates as if uh, there is a plane that defines the loads on the bars. However, I will explain this later when we talk about shells and planes. And that's it. That's all the possible load definitions you can do on nodes and bars in Autodesk Robot. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you have enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. This is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel, and we will see you in future videos.